As many people smarter than me have pointed out before, the rocket equation is quite a brutal thing. The more mass you want to take to space, the more fuel you need to add, but then that fuel also adds mass, which means you need more fuel to carry that fuel, and the cycle just continues. The ratio of actual payload mass to the total mass of a rocket, including the fuel, can often be less than 1%. While some modern designs might push this to 4 or 5%, at a certain point, you just max out what the laws of physics allow. After all, the gravity of Earth isn't about to change anytime soon, and there's only so much energy density that can be extracted from rocket fuels, even if you cryogenically cool it to reduce the space it takes up and cram in even more of it into your rocket's tanks. Modern rockets have been starting to go bigger and go reusable as a method to increase efficiency and cadence while reducing price, and this is ultimately a great leap forward for the industry. But those reusable rockets are still only 5% payload at best and burn up massive amounts of propellant. In fact, Due to the return to launch site burns, re-entry burns, landing burns, etc., the mass fraction of reusable rockets can sometimes get pushed even lower than an expendable one, causing engineers to go ahead and make them even bigger to compensate. Of course, we also need to worry about the massive amount of greenhouse gas emissions that are being burned up every time a rocket is shot into orbit. At a time when our society is mostly trying to push towards net zero carbon emissions, the massive growth in the rocket launch industry is most definitely moving in the opposite direction. Add to that the fact that methane burning rockets are becoming even more common, and methane is an extremely potent greenhouse gas even more so than carbon dioxide. All these factors and more have led to many engineers trying to think of a better way to launch mass into orbit, and one small United States-based company thinks they might just have found one. Of course, I'm talking about Spin Launch. Hey everyone, it's Dave here. Thanks for watching. Today I'm recording this in the past. Uh, unless something has gone horribly wrong, I'm actually sitting on a beach right now enjoying a vacation, but it's not very good to leave a channel stagnant too long. So pre-recording this video, I think it's an interesting topic, something to keep an eye on for the future. And of course, as the intro said, it is spin launch. This is a wildly different concept to what we're normally used to with rockets, but at least uh, thinking about it, it could make a lot of sense potentially. When I first read about this concept and the company trying to do it, I felt like I was seeing like a Barney Stinson character from How I Met Your Mother. He's just like, wait for it. We're going to throw the satellites into space. Forget rockets. It's going to be legendary. It's going to be legend. Wait for it. Dairy. And uh, <laughs> I find it just kind of funny. There's been a lot of skeptics out there, but uh, the skepticism has kind of quieted down a little bit over the past couple years. And the company does say that they'll be able to launch 220 kilograms to low Earth orbit. That puts it right around the range electron launches. They have a capacity of 320 kilograms, but it's rarely full till the gills electron. It's often launching smaller than 300 kilogram payloads. So these two, if spin launch ever does get up and running, and of course that is a big if as we're going to get into later on, these two would be direct competitors. So I thought it would be important to take a look at the potential future competitors in the space, see if this concept has a leg to stand on. Before we take a look at that though, I hope you'll consider hitting subscribe by the end of the video. If you're not already subscribed, every subscriber helps so much. Thank you guys 
and let's dive into spin launch. As long as there's been space flight, people have been trying to figure out if there's a more efficient way of getting to orbit than carrying so much mass with you. At various times, scientists have also looked into the feasibility of space elevators to lift a payload, rail guns shooting a payload into orbit, other ballistic solutions, as well as spin launch. Spin Launch, the company, is the first time a commercial entity has ever tried to put one of these concepts into action, though. This company was founded back in 2014 and has raised $150 million across 21 different investors. The most recent Series B funding round raised a whopping $71 million for the company. So while this concept might sound like a bit of a joke at first, the investors footing the bill are extremely serious about it. Spin launch works, as you might expect, by taking electrical energy, aka there's no burning of fossil fuels here, leading to greenhouse gas emissions, rotating an arm inside of a circular vacuum chamber. The faster the payload inside this vacuum chamber spins, the greater its angular momentum. When the payload is finally released, all this energy transforms into forward motion, propelling the craft forward. Now it's important to note that this is just replacing the bulky first stage of a rocket, not the entire thing. The satellite payload will be encapsulated into a smaller rocket that's basically the size of a second stage on a conventional rocket, which will carry the payload the rest of the way and prevent it from being damaged by the extreme forces it will be subjected to. The prototype spin launch currently has operational is about one third of the diameter of their planned final version. This prototype has already launched several payloads, albeit not all the way to orbit, including experiments for NASA, Airbus, and Cornell University. Of course, there are some major challenges with its technology as well. For one thing, the vehicle gets extremely hot as it's shot out of the accelerator faster than the speed of sound. The vehicle's payloads would also be under immense pressure. The company says peak acceleration would be a mind-boggling 10,000 Gs, and it would be traveling at 4,100 miles per hour at peak speeds. It's also extremely difficult to release the payload at exactly the right time, so it exits the vacuum chamber into the tube and shoots through a cover into the air. The release mechanism would also have to handle insane amounts of pressures and be able to release the payload in a split second. This concept would obviously never work for manned spaceflight as the human body is far too fragile to survive these pressures, but the company does expect they'll be able to send up payloads of up to 200 kilograms, which is in the range of an electron rocket to low Earth orbit. Spin Launch thinks they'll be able to do this at a fraction of the cost of current providers, but some experts remain skeptical about the feasibility of the technology. Some of the problems that have been pointed out are that the plumbing of a liquid-fueled rocket cannot survive these forces, meaning that they will have to look to solid propellants for their vehicle, something that is not always ideal. Also, the full-scale version would have an exit velocity five times the current prototype, and when the vehicle hits that mylar sheet covering the exit of the vacuum chamber, it will have 25 times the kinetic energy of the current tests. At these speeds, the transition from vacuum to hitting open air would be like hitting a wall of atmosphere for the vehicle. Remember, the vehicle will also be moving at its fastest where the atmosphere is thinnest, which is low to the ground, as opposed to most vehicles that accelerate faster as the atmosphere gets thinner higher up. All these cautions aside, though, many people have been quite impressed with the progress Spin Launch has made over the past several years, and it will be interesting to watch their progress as they push towards a full-sized system in 2026. So that's Spin Launch for you. I think the name of the company describes it pretty perfectly. It's really a wild idea, but uh, definitely pretty interesting. So the question I have for you now, and the question I'm asking myself, of course, is this technology a threat to Electron? Could it potentially disrupt the market and take over 
all those small sat payloads from Electron in the, you know, say a decade from now. Uh, personally, I'm not super worried about it yet. They have so many hurdles to get through. They're going to need to raise a lot more funding to build a, build a full-sized launcher. And uh, there's so much more difficulties between being, you know, a prototype versus becoming operational. So I think it's going to be extremely interesting to watch. I love seeing these innovative new ideas popping up everywhere. Definitely not just, you know, redoing something other people have done. And I do applaud them for that. Definitely uh, take some balls to go for what they're going for. They have some challenges around, you know, making sure satellites can survive the forces that these vehicles are being put under. They're also working on, you know, making special satellites that can survive these huge G forces. And uh, yeah, it's a long road forward for them. I really wouldn't be surprised if that 2026 date doesn't slip to, you know, 2028 or even beyond. And there's a lot of testing and really uh, it's wait and see mode for me. So for me, Electron basically still owns the small launch space or at least the dedicated small launch space for now. But this is a company to keep an eye on for the future, and I did just want to flag it for you all. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this company and this technology. Is it for real, or are they just mad scientists over there and it's never going to work? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you when I get back from my vacation. I hope you have a great day. Bye for now.